guys so you're welcome back thanks for clicking so 10 surprising similarities between muslim and jewish prayer let's check it out here on FTD Facts, we've taken a look at the similarities between Islam and Judaism on a whole, but we never actually dove into specific similarities, especially the similarities in prayer. So what's going on guys? My name is Leroy Kenton and welcome back to another episode and I found 10 surprising similarities between prayer in Islam and Judaism. Very fascinating. So let's take a look. Starting at number 10, there are similarities with the purpose of prayer in each of these religions. So starting with Judaism, Judaism, prayer builds the relationship between God and human beings. Well, because when people pray, they spend time with God, and to pray is to serve God with your heart. Instead of the religion of Islam, prayer keeps Muslims in touch with God and keeps Muslims constantly reflecting on their actions and assessing whether or not they're living true. And number nine, we have the command to pray. So praying isn't just an idea that Muslims and Jews just came up like, oh, it's a good idea if I'm in the mood. Rather, it's actually actually a command and obligatory in both religions. In Judaism, prayer is seen as a service of the heart and it's a commandment based in the Torah. It's mandatory for both Jewish men and women. And the scripture often used for this is Deuteronomy 11 verse 13 which says, you shall serve God with your whole heart. And now in Islam, the command to pray is found in Surah 30, Arum 17 and 18. Some say that these only mention four prayer times, but the fifth time is said to be found in Hud 11 verse 104 which says and establish prayer at the two ends of the day and at the approach of the night. Jews and Muslims also pray directly to God. So in prayer, each individual Muslim and Jew has direct contact with God. There's no need for a priest or any other type of intermediary. It's just you and God. Although yes, there are prayer leaders and people of religious authority, but they're not to be viewed as intermediaries at all, but rather they're just people who may have greater knowledge and understanding of the particular faith. You can also find call to prayers in Judaism and Islam as well. In Islam, we have the Azan and that's the call to worship and it's recited in a melodious way. The main purpose behind the Azan is to make an easy summary of the Islamic beliefs really available to everyone, as well as a daily reminder for Muslims to pray. The Azan goes as follows. God is the greatest, and that's repeated four times. I bear witness that there is no Lord except God, and that's repeated twice. I bear witness that Muhammad is a messenger of God, and that's repeated twice. Make haste towards prayer, also repeated twice. Make haste towards success, repeated twice. God is the greatest that's also repeated twice and the final line is only repeated once and that says there is no Lord except God now for Jews in the past Jews would use a ram's horn <laughs> However, nowadays, what is called the Bar Chu is conducted as a part of the Jewish prayer service and it serves as a call to prayer. The call to prayer consists of a Jew who is vocally trained called a Chazan and he calls out, bless the Lord, the blessed one. And then the congregation responds and says, bless is the Lord, the blessed one forever and ever. And then the Chazan repeats the congregation's part. There's also a similarity with prayer time. So Jews are supposed to pray three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening. And praying regularly enables a person to really build a closer relationship with God. And Muslims, you know, they pray five times a day. The Salat is the second of the five pillars of Islam and it's observed at five different times of the day. Yeah, morning, afternoon, late afternoon, evening, and night. 
You'll also find similar prayer positions, standing, sitting, bowing, and prostration. Prostration is not as common in Judaism, but certain groups like the Ashkenazi Jews, they regularly prostrate themselves in prayer. There's also what I call main prayers. So inside of Judaism, there's this Shema, and it's the most important prayer in Judaism, and it's recited often multiple times a day, and this reaffirms the Jewish people to their faith of Judaism. It goes as follows. Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. And by the way, Adonai translates to the Lord in English, so you could also say it like this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And in Islam, it's the Shahada, and the Shahada sums up Islam in one single prayer. Ashhadu <laughs> As well as being a statement of faith, recitation of the Shahada is also required for any that wants to convert to the religion and they gotta believe it as well. And it goes as follows, there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Number three, they share the direction that they face. Well, they don't actually share the direction that they face in prayer, but for Jews, it's customary that they face towards the east. However, they don't actually necessarily have to face the east. They just face the Temple Mount in Jerusalem and depending on your location it could be in the east. Muslims all around the world they face the Kaaba in the city of Mecca when they perform their prayers. It also unites Muslims from all around the world in their worship of God despite their cultural racial differences. And number two we have washing before prayer. So in Judaism ritual washing or ablution of full body immersion as well as washing the hands exists. A person should wash their hands before prayer and the term in Hebrew is netilat yadaim which is the washing of hands with a cup. Before praying Muslims Muslims wash their hands, face, head, and feet, and this washing ablution is called wudu. And the purpose is to physically purify yourself, but it also symbolizes spiritual purity as well. And the final similarity I want to share with you is the similarity of public prayers. So Muslims can pray anywhere, but there are added benefits to pray with others in a mosque. Praying together in a congregation helps Muslims to realize that everyone is equal, and it's an opportunity to remain united in the faith. Jews are also invited to go to the synagogue to pray but can pray anywhere also. It really helps to build togetherness within the Jewish community locally and around the world. Okay guys, so these were 10 similarities that I discovered between prayer in Islam and Judaism. Now it's your turn to join in on the conversation. Wow, interesting. I'm getting to learn a lot about Judaism. Yeah. Wow, so the Jewish prayer is similar to the Muslim prayer and it's beautiful to watch. And the particular part that was really new to me was the the clip he showed whereas they were praying. I don't know if that was prayer or they were worshipping but that was so beautiful and I, I could feel the connection between the man you know trying to reference God. Just imagine if they want to do their prayers they need to wash their hands to cleanse themselves and they'll go before God clean and neat. Same thing with Muslim, they will wash their hands, they will wash their feet, they will wash their, their legs, their hand, their face and their legs. So the similarities is a whole lot. Just imagine the way Jewish people pray. They all face, face a particular direction for them to operate and they have this particular outfit they do wear. Some of them wear white, some of them wear black and this is beautiful. Like. I am aware of most of these points when it comes to Muslim or the Islam aspect, but the Jewish aspect, I never knew they pray similar. I never knew their prayers were so so similar. That was beautiful to know. Like I enjoyed watching this video. I'm glad I got to learn about this particular video, especially about the Jewish people. So it's a wrap, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment box. Let's keep the discussion going. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more. Like, share, and comment. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.